Is it just me or have third party graphics card designs become really stale? I mean, over the years, they really haven't changed all that much. Let's take a look at an example. The MSI 1080 Ti Gaming X Trio, which released back in 2017, so that's eight years ago. Uh, this card, I mean, it's a three fan design, you know, two and a half slots. And then let's take a look at the MSI RTX 5090 Gaming X Trio. And it's kind of the same deal, but just bigger and thicker. I mean, look at how thick this boy is. I mean, that's that's almost four slots. At the same time, let's take a look at NVIDIA's Founder Edition series. So with the 1080 Ti, that was a blower design, pretty suboptimal cooling, but you know, had a very unique aesthetic compared to what was on the market at the time. And then eight years later, we have the RTX 5090 Founders Edition, which is super innovative, has a very unique cooling design, has the most compact PCB we've ever seen for a graphics card, and just has a very minimalistic, sleek, premium look to it. And it's crazy because the third-party cards like the MSI one actually cost more than the Founders Edition card. Now, the reason for that is actually pretty simple. Um, and to look into it, let's first take a look at why EVGA left the graphics card business entirely. So for those of you who don't know, EVGA used to be a brand like MSI, Asus, um, that made graphics cards. And they stopped making graphics cards in 2022. So that was with the 30 series. So they didn't make any 40 series cards. And one of the main reasons was because their margins just weren't good enough to continue supporting the business. And on top of the fact that NVIDIA gives AIB partners a really tough time uh, when it comes to pricing and supplying the actual chips. In any case, the, the main point is that the AIB partner business model is really tough. You're looking at usually about just a 10% margin on your graphics cards, uh, which sounds all right, um, because that means if they sell a graphics card for $600, they make $60 margin on it. But remember that margin doesn't include things like marketing, distribution, you just subtract the cost of producing the actual product. So let's compare to NVIDIA. So NVIDIA overall as a business in Q4 2024, um, they made over 70% margin, gross margin on their products across the board. You know, just to give a, a better point of comparison because NVIDIA sells a lot of different things, um, let's take a look at one of their data center grade graphics cards. So the H100 data center GPU, um, which obviously isn't a direct point of comparison with consumer graphics cards, but just gives us an idea of how much money NVIDIA is raking in. And uh, according to uh, some analysts, they are making as much as 823% margin on their H100 uh, data center GPUs. So that means for every dollar it costs to make that graphics card or that graphics processing unit, they are making $9 back. And so because they have all that extra money, they're able to put that into research and development, innovating on cooler designs. And that's why their products have just gotten so much better compared to third party cards. And in my opinion, I honestly think that third party cards shouldn't exist. I think the you know, they are raising the average price of graphics cards. I mean, if you think about it this way, right? NVIDIA still supplies all of the chips, right? And third-party uh, companies like MSI, Asus, Gigabyte, all these companies, they're essentially just middlemen. Their cards will often cost more than the Founders Edition, even though fundamentally it's the same product. I mean, with the RTX 5090, this has just gotten so bad because we have cards like the Asus ROG Strix or whatever, like costing $2,700, $2,800. And at most, you might be getting three to 7% Bruh. of a performance improvement from overclocking. Ideally, if you think about it this way, right? Every 5090 chip could have been a founder's edition, but because we have these third parties there, they're turning into your Asus ROGs, your MSI Gaming X Trios, your Asus Tough cards, which are higher priced, bigger, heftier, and I don't know, just overall, they don't look that good. Uh, they don't perform that much better, um, but they cost way more. And so I feel like ideally you would have Nvidia as the sole supplier, just cut out the middlemen. And I think that would honestly reduce the average price 
of graphics cards. And so let's take a look at why Nvidia does this anyways. And the first part is kind of what I alluded to, which is that they want the perception of competition. For the average person, they walk into the store, right? And they see an RTX 5090, but they see MSI, Gigabyte, Asus, um, Galax, uh, a bunch of other different brands. And they feel like it's like walking to a cereal aisle, right? Like they're all owned by General Mills, but you have all these different choices and, and you feel like, oh, you know, I actually have a lot of choice in, in what I'm buying, but, but you don't, right? They're the same graphics card. And so that's why NVIDIA wants to work with AIBs. And the other part of it is that the highest margin item in a graphics card is the chip itself and is, is, the, is the GPU chip and the memory, like the actual core processing units, right? The cooler, the board, the fans, those are all pretty low margin items. And so NVIDIA, you know, from their perspective, they can maintain higher margins by just, you know, shipping the GPU chips out to these AIB partner companies and then have them figure out the cooling design, manufacturing production, let them take up the low margin activities. And that's going to look good on NVIDIA's balance sheet. It's going to be, you know, it's going to make investors happy. So these two main reasons are why NVIDIA still does this and why they haven't decided just like, hey, why don't we just capture more of the market? That's just my opinion about this. I think, honestly, third-party companies, I foresee that more of them will probably leave this industry. The, the only reason why they're still around right now is because during this time of GPU shortage, they can make a lot bigger margins, right? Like they're selling their cards with bundles, they're able to sell their other items. But once that goes away, I think these companies will have a, a very tough time. But yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, this is just my opinion about third-party cards and why I think they kind of suck.